question. What's the typical response for a clinician who wants to know more about a colleague's skill level? It's not uncommon to hear a clinician use some version of the phrase, I would trust her to care for my family. This video was created to introduce you to what is a very interesting way of thinking about both learning and teaching. It's demonstrating something called an entrustable professional activity or EPA. We will cover what an EPA is, why it's important, what's involved in using EPAs during a rotation, and what's trust got to do with it. Here is a multiple choice question. What is an EPA? A, a unit of professional work. B, what's actually done during the clinician's day. C, something that can be assigned, measured, and observed. D, that same something that a supervisor could trust a learner to do independently or unsupervised. E, a way to teach and assess learners, or F, all of the above. It's no surprise that each of these describes an EPA. Let's review some concrete examples. These are some EPAs for pediatric hematology oncology. One, performing and presenting patient assessments relevant to pediatric hematology oncology. Two, conveying information to patients and families regarding possible or probable diagnosis and the steps needed for confirmation. Three, obtaining consent and organizing for patients to receive transfusion or undergo diagnostic procedures, four, explaining diagnoses and initial management plans to patients and families. Each EPA is a unit of work and outlines something a pediatric hematologist oncologist actually does. You could also imagine your resident being trusted to function independently for each of those activities, and so, an EPA is something on which a learner could be both observed and assessed. Why might an EPA be important in the context of teaching and learning? Two reasons are, one, confirming progress in performing key tasks of our specialty, and two, for feedback. First, let's talk about confirming a resident's progress. In CBD, we want to ensure that each resident can competently perform key tasks. By tracking them, our competency committee will have information to confirm who is making progress as expected and to identify early on if someone needs extra support in a given area. Residents are expected to achieve the EPAs by the end of each stage of training and teachers are to confirm that the EPAs have been achieved. EPAs represent the integration of a large number of competencies into a manageable number of activities for learners. They also enable supervising faculty to meaningfully assess residents during the training program. Remember the other reason? The second one is for feedback. For years, learners have been telling us they want more meaningful and helpful feedback. Feedback is one of the most effective ways to support a resident's growth and development. The most specific and meaningful feedback is based on what is directly observed. It is by directly observing an EPA task that you are able to provide the most helpful feedback about it. So what's trust got to do with it? The more a supervisor directly observes a learner, the more likely and easier it is to confirm that he or she trusts the learner to perform an act independently or unsupervised. And so to bring it back to where I began, not just for learners by the end of their training program, but as a general professional role, shouldn't we all aspire to be a clinician our colleagues would trust to take care of their family members?